keeps muting me. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. We're so excited that you're here with us today. Happy Monday. All right, it is 12 o'clock, so we'll get started. Welcome to our uh, Monday webinar series. We are going to talk today about text complexity. Uh, we're going to discuss the process of text complexity that's found in our ELA standards, but also the resources to support text complexity in our re, um, text complexity support document. If you have attended one of our text complexity sessions before, this may be a refresher of some of that same material. Um, but either way, if you're new to this um, text complexity content or you've seen it before, we are happy to have you with us today. In the chat, Casey Prince Harvey is going to be dropping links throughout our presentation today. Um, and the first thing we're going to do, the QR code here, as well as the links that are being dropped, link you to your attendance and the landing page. The text complexity landing page today houses everything you'll need for this text complexity session. Any of the documents referenced today will be linked on that landing page but also the link for attendance is linked there. So if you will, let us know who you are and where you're from on that attendance form. We appreciate capturing that information and it helps us with our federal accountability to serving the state of South Carolina. As far as introductions, my name is Mandy Hawker. I'm the Elementary ELA Education Associate with the South Carolina Department of Education Office of Assessment and Standards. With me today, I have three of my colleagues, Tabitha Hughes, who's our middle level ELA education associate, Brenna McCormick, who's our secondary level education associate, and then we have Casey Prince Harvey, who is our humanities education associate and ELA support person. We're happy to be with you today. Um, if you have any questions or concerns, you can drop those in the chat as we're going through and we'll try to respond. Um, again, you have the link to the landing page, which houses all of our resources that will be presented today, as well as the attendance form to let us know who you are and where you're from. All right, let's get started. Our purpose today focuses on a little data. Think about this data. 54% of the students in South Carolina are reading at or above grade level. That's kind of like flipping a coin, right? So with data like that, our purpose today is focusing on using the text complexity process, which lives inside our 2023 ELA standards to ensure that the students in South Carolina are exposed to appropriately complex texts that are adequate for teaching our standards. So we want all students to be reading at or above grade level by the end of the year, right? That's our goal. One way to do that is to analyze text complexity in regard to how we're, we're um, instructing our students. Um, today, we will talk about two separate items that have different purposes, but the same goal. So the document on the left is the text complexity process. Now this is located within the 2023 ELA standards document. The document uh, pictured on the right here is our text complexity resources document that supports the ELA standards. It has a different purpose to provide resources and support for implementing text complexity. However, both of them have the same goal of ensuring that we are teaching with adequately complex text for the students in South Carolina. So a little self-assessment before we get started. Uh, we, we love a little self-assessment here in the Office of Assessment and Standards. Um, so what I want you to do is read these two statements on the right. I can define text complexity and explain its three components. And I'm equipped to help teachers regularly use all three components of text complexity to evaluate text for classroom use. Drop in the chat how you feel about those statements. One, do you strongly disagree? Or five, do you strongly agree with those statements? Okay, I see a lot of threes, neutral, maybe disagree, not sure. 
Awesome. Well, rest assured, if you are at a three, two, or one, do not fear. We are going to build some capacity today, and we're going to get to that four and five range. I definitely feel it. And good, I see Sonia is at a four. Great job, Sonia. All right, let's get started then. In the chat, what I'd like for you to do, oh, go back, Tabitha, thank you. Um, in the chat, what I'd like for you to do is when you think of text complexity, what comes to mind? Go ahead and drop a couple thoughts in the chat. When you think of text complexity, what comes to mind? Ooh, rigor. Okay, awesome. Rigorous text, vocabulary. That's an important aspect. Definitely. Sentence structure. Good. Oh, I see Lexile. Okay, syntax and sentence types. Very nice. Multiple factors, Dr. Osborne. Hmm. Very good. I see a lot of great answers. A lot of great answers. Okay. It sounds like you all have a pretty good understanding. So I don't, I'm surprised by those numbers, that self-assessment score. Um, let's talk about the text complexity process. So why does text complexity matter? Well, research shows us that text complexity is a very important aspect of um, ELA education because without appropriate attention to text complexity, fewer opportunities are given to students for strategic instruction. Students who consistently receive instruction in low complexity texts experience fewer opportunities for those strategic instructions. Um, they receive less exposure to a variety of text structures, genres, different text organization, different types of vocabulary, or um, disciplinary core ideas and concepts in science, art, math, humanities, history. It's a, it's a compounding issue, right? They encounter less exposures to sophisticated ideas and opportunities to experience the unfamiliar. Text complexity lends itself to um, getting students to experience things that may be unfamiliar um, that they don't have background knowledge on. And then finally, students who are not exposed to adequately complex texts often develop an inadequate competency and recognize themselves as maybe being in lower echelons of their class. We as um, stakeholders in um, South Carolina and um, as a writing team for these standards, we found it very important to include text complexity as part of the 2023 ELA standards because we wanted to ensure that all students in South Carolina were exposed to those adequately complex texts to avoid these pitfalls. We also know that in South Carolina, you are currently adopting high quality instructional materials. Let me see those smiles. Yes, we are. We have those caravans going through right now. And this is a layer on top of those high quality instructional materials. This gives you a process for evaluating the texts that are presented in those materials to meet the specific needs of the learners in your classroom. This process is here to challenge teachers to consider three areas when selecting text for classroom instruction. When you're considering your students, you can consider their data story. So what are the three components of text complexity? Text complexity in general is the level of difficulty in reading and understanding a text, but it's made of three components. The first is the quantitative aspect. Next is qualitative. And then we have the reader in task. So what do you notice, drop in the chat, about these three components of text complexity? Very good, Jamie. <laughs> equal importance, Robin. Yes, they're all equal. No one component of text complexity is more important than the other. Now, when I think about quantitative, that's the one typically in our state we're most familiar with, right? But it's no more important than considering the reader and task or considering the qualitative nature of text. Let's get into that a little bit. 
So when we look at the quantitative nature of text, this aspect addresses the measurable data of a text. That deals with sentence length, word length, word frequency. This is a quantifiable measure of text. And the two quantifiable measures of text that are most widely used in South Carolina are the flesh Kincaid and the Lexile framework. So both of those were considered in the quantitative section for our text complexity process. Here is a chart that's provided to you in the text complexity process within the 2023 standards that shows the flesh Kincaid and Lexile levels for different grade bands K through 12th grade. Now, let's take a look at some quantitative analysis of text. We have several titles here on the left. These titles represent texts that are commonly taught at different grade levels in South Carolina. In fact, all of these texts um, were presented to different teachers at different grade levels throughout our state and all agreed in the quick summary of those texts and that they were taught at certain grade levels. But let's think about what grade levels these texts were taught at. How about the Grapes of Wrath? Oh, yes, the story of a family's struggle for survival during the Great Depression. What grade level would you teach the Grapes of Wrath? Drop in the chat for me. What do you think? Oh, okay, yes, 12th. I could see that definitely. A lot of tough themes in here, right? High school, that's what we're thinking. Let's look at the Lexile measure for the Grapes of Wrath. It is a 680 Lexile, which quantitatively would be appropriate for second or third grade. Anybody want to teach this to your second graders? Not me. <laughs> okay, let's think about the Lord of the Flies. No way. Exactly, Mia. <laughs> um, Lord of the Flies. Poor piggy, right? Smashing the head. I mean, like, this is some savagery of schoolboys. Um, it, it really talks a lot of symbolism about the depravity of man. What grade would we teach Lord of the Flies with? Maybe ninth grade. Yeah, I think I remember learning it night or reading it ninth grade. Okay, when we consider the Lexile level of the Lord of the Flies, we see that it's a 770 and would be appropriate quantitatively for fourth or fifth grade. Would those themes be appropriate for fourth or fifth grade? Consider your audience. All right, the telltale heart. Oh, what symbolism we have here, that relentless sound of a vengeful heart, an unnamed narrator, so pretty confusing for the audience. What grade would we teach an unreliable narrator? I love that you use the language of the standards. All right, tell me what grade level we would teach telltale heart. I know we're starting to catch on, right? Okay, <laughs> let's see. Telltale Heart quantitatively is appropriate for fourth or fifth grade. I believe we would have some calls from parents if I taught this to my fourth graders. Um, yeah, I see some head nodding. What about the Great Gatsby? Oh, a lot of shock faces. <laughs> That's right. The Great Gatsby. Oh my goodness. We have um, murder. We have drug use. We have uh, uh, adultery, abuse, all appropriate things for elementary, right? Absolutely no way. Quantitatively, this text would be appropriate for sixth through eighth grade. You may be able to teach this with your sixth or eighth graders, but they better be a pretty reliable um, and a, a pretty uh, responsible group of middle schoolers, right? Yeah. Oh, but some of my juniors aren't even ready for Great Gatsby. I agree. I love that comment. Yes. All right. Now let's look at our last two examples. These are interesting because these are examples from our CTE audience. So we've had a year long partnership with our CTE office here at the State Department. Um, and one text that we often see read in welding classes is this welding textbook, Principles and Practice. So this is just a textbook on how to weld. Lexile, this is appropriate for ninth through 10th grade. But how often do we hear that, oh, that student is a Kate student? That student is a CTE student. He doesn't have to read on grade level. 
what does this information prove to you right now? They better be reading on grade level in those CTE programs, right? Let's take a look at this um, CNA um, article. This is a nursing article that students in a CNA class may be provided to read. The Lexile level for this is 11th and 12th grade. Again, we can't dismiss our students who are going to our CTE programs that they don't have to read on grade level because look at the level of quantitative measure for that CNA article. Better be reading on grade level to understand that text. All right, so that is our quantitative measure. Next, let's take a look at the qualitative measure. Qualitatively, when we consider a text, that means that we're considering the extent to which text features related to content and meaning are used. So let's think about some critical features that computers can't analyze. This is not a, a mathematical equation that you can solve to find out the qualitative measure. Things considered here would be like author's purpose, theme or knowledge demands, multiple meanings, i.e. telltale heart, figurative language that's used within text. We also see text organization or structures, the use of graphics and vocabulary. Now, when we say graphics, oftentimes um, people will think that using graphics decreases the qualitative nat nature of a text because it makes it easier, right? If there's graphics, then that makes it easier for me to understand and read. However, when we talk about the qualitative measure of graphics increasing text complexity, that means that maybe the graphic includes information that the text, body text, does not. So maybe you have a timeline that per, um, presents extra information. Maybe you have a diagram that presents extra information. All right, so now let's think about the quantitative measure of these texts. Grapes of Wrath. Initially, we were thinking that quantitatively it was the second through third grade text, but qualitatively, what makes this text not appropriate for second, third grade? Drop in the chat. Anybody have an idea why the Grapes of Wrath would not be appropriate for second and third grade? The theme, yes, very good. Mature theme, content. Do we quite understand the Great Depression in second and third grade? Do we understand migrant labor in third grade? The vocabulary, very good. All right, now let's think about the telltale heart. The telltale heart would be appropriate for second and third grade quantitatively, but qualitatively, what makes it not appropriate? April Simmons, good to see you this morning. The vocabulary, definitely the subject matter, the figurative language. Oh man, multiple meanings. Very good, very good. Okay, let's skip ahead a couple. Let's go to that welding uh, textbook. The welding textbook would present informational uh, or a, an informational structure. It would have diagrams, um, maybe some tables. Tell me what about the welding manual would cause it to be qualitatively complex. Academic vocabulary, technical vocabulary. Good, very good. How about those diagrams, tables, charts? You've got to have capacity to read and analyze all of that as well. Very good. So hopefully this little exercise has shown you the reason that our quantitative measure is insufficient on its own. We must consider all three aspects of text complexity, which brings us to our third aspect. The third aspect of text complexity focuses on that individual reader and the task or purpose that you have for reading. So some uh, contributing factors to this may include your student's background knowledge. Now let's think for just a second, if you were presenting the Grapes of Wrath to a group of students that were from migrant worker backgrounds, could they more easily enter that information than maybe students who have no background knowledge of migrant workers? 
Perhaps, yes, yeah, Sonia, they have the context and the background knowledge for it. Now, the complexity of the content. When I think about this, I think about um, my, 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 the Great Gatsby. <laughs> There's a lot of complex content about um, uh, psychotic behavior, drug use, um, the light that keeps flashing across the river. There's a lot of symbolism there. A lot of that is complex content, which may not be appropriate for all readers in your classroom. Their cognitive capacity. Now, this deals with uh, the task. So what are you asking them to do? Are you asking them just to pick out a word to describe the main character? Or are you asking them to describe how the character changes over time? The cognitive capacity of that task, those tasks are very different. The reading skill, so that would be being able to read text, informational, literary, and tables, and charts, and graphs, a lot of reading skill um, is, uh, is analyzed in the reader and task analysis. Their motivation and engagement. Students may be uh, different levels of motivated to read a nursing article, rather than the telltale heart, right? Th those are different levels of engagement. Then we have the task and assessment. And then finally, just the developmental level of your reader. And again, this task or this section of text complexity is so dependent on the audience that you serve. So let's think back to our high quality instructional materials. We know that we're getting that adoption. We're all gonna have new textbooks to pull from for our instruction. However, your task as the professional and the expert in your classroom is to use that reader and task aspect of text complexity to make sure that you're choosing the most appropriate text for the um, students that you are serving and supporting. So let's go uh, in the theme. Yes, go on. All right. We notice that all three of these aspects are equally important and all three are essential in order for us to get to the target of the 2023 ELA standards. So now I think it's time for us to practice a little bit of this. Before we get into that, I have two questions for you to answer in the chat. Here's our first one. How does text complexity and the vertical, pro vertical progression of standards connect? So before you answer in the chat, let's think about this. Text complexity, those three, those three components, quantitative, qualitative, and reader and task. How, did the, how does that connect to our vertical progression of standards? Looking at that English 4 through kindergarten progression. How does text complexity connect to that? Do you see any connections? Go ahead and drop in the chat. Sonia says she sees a connection between the increased complexity of the task text and the more rigorous the task. Definitely, we see that. Yes, your text complexity should increase too. Very good, very good. So it, it is an expectation that text complexity is considered at each level. They should be able to understand and dissect texts that are deeper in meaning each year. Very good. All right, all right, we see some good connections there. Keep dropping those. Oh, Janice, ding, ding, ding. Janice, you hit it on the head right there. They're building blocks, working towards moving forward. You have to have the foundation before you move forward. Text complexity is the same way. We see that so much in our vertical articulation of the indicators that we have to build a good foundation before we can get up to that analyze and critique at our uh, 11th and 12th grade levels. It's the same way with text complexity. We can't be reading War and Peace if we first didn't read Charlotte's Web. Okay, here's our next question. With which component of text complexity might the teachers in your district or school need the most support? So think about that for just a second. And then drop in the chat. Which component of text complexity might the teachers in your district or school need the most support? 
This will give us some information about what our next session on text complexity may look like. Qualitative, okay, I love that. We can definitely demonstrate some qualitative analysis. And we have some resources to support that as well. Lexile is easy. <laughs> Dr. Osborne, I agree, I agree. I'm gonna show you a little trick for text complex or quantitative as well. All right, all right, let's move on to our next section. And this is where we're gonna get to try it. So um, the text we're going to use today is a Chadwick Bozeman biography in timeline. We love Chadwick Bozeman here in South Carolina. What a great representative of our state. Um, this text is actually pulled from our African-American history calendar. So um, if you ever wonder where this came from, I can get you that resource. But we're going to talk about how to analyze the quantitative measure of a text. So in the text complexity process within the standards document, you'll see this chart, this pink chart. It has low complexity, which means that the text is at a lower end or, of, or below grade level quantitative reading, reading measure. You have the mid level complexity where the text is in the mid range of the quantitative reading measure. And then you have high complexity where the text is at the high end or above the grade level quantitative reading measure. But how do we figure out the quantitative measure of a text? Well, in a lot of books, it'll be labeled, right? It'll say on the front, oh, this is a 680 Lexile. Or maybe you can go to a website and look up the quantitative measure. However, if you're using a text that you don't have the Lexile for, we have a tool for you. This link is located on your text complexity landing page. It is called the Lexile Text Analyzer. It's also in the chat. And then we have a short little video to show you what this tool does. I think, Tabitha, you might need to unmute yourself so that we can hear the video. All right, how about I talk y'all through it? So this is a quantitative measure. Tabitha, if you can bring that back up and I'll talk through it. Um, this website allows you to copy and paste any text that you find into the Lexile Text Analyzer. So you click down here where it says Lexile Text Analyzer on the bottom row, third box. Once you click there, then you can copy and paste your text into a search um, box. Copy and paste it into there, and then it will produce for you the Lexile level of that text, as well as any vocabulary words that may be tier two or tier three words that you might want to teach when you're instructing this text. So just a little tool for you. Let's go ahead and click ahead, and I'll show you what the screen looks like when a text is analyzed. Go ahead and click forward tab. All right, so once our Chadwick Bozeman text was analyzed, we received a Lexile of 1210 to 1400. It's a pretty complex text quantitatively. Now you'll see here beside the, the Lexile level that it says 49 measures left for this month. With a free account to this tool, you get 50 measures every month. So those of you that maybe um, haven't used this before, this is a great place to um, to go and analyze your text for free. So let's look at 1210 to 1400 compared to our chart. So when I look at my chart from my text complexity process, quantitatively, this Chadwick Bozeman text falls within ninth to 10th grade or 11th grade and plus, okay? 
because it's a 1210 to 1400 Lexile, we see that quantitatively it's up here at the top. It's a pretty uh, quantitatively complex text. Was that what you were thinking initially? Anybody? No, okay, okay, I didn't either. When I looked at it, um, the first time I read it, I read it with fifth graders. So <laughs> quantitatively, it was probably not appropriate at the, the way that it looked. Very good, okay, let's go on. So when we look at the chart, we say that this would be low complexity quantitatively for maybe our 11th and 12th graders but it would be mid complexity for our ninth and 10th graders. But that's just one aspect. That's just quantitatively. Now let's look at this text qualitatively. The qualitative rubric is divided into four sections, meaning, structure, language, and then theme and knowledge demands. So the, um, the rubric is divided into these four sections for us to analyze our text. And we can get into this a little deeper, um, maybe in a subsequent uh, webinar where we look at the qualitative measure. But we have these three tags as well. In just a second, I'm gonna review this passage with you and I'm gonna tag places where I see low complexity, where I see mid-level complexity, and where I may see high-level complexity. So let's take a look at that first page. This is just the first couple paragraphs of your Chadwick Bozeman article. Throughout this first couple paragraphs, we see low complexity qualitatively. Now, what that means is that this text is factual information. It's straightforward. It's right there. I'm not having to, um, to conclude anything. I'm not having to sum up anything. That information is right there. We're hearing things like he was active in speech and debate. He was in a biographical film 42. He starred as James Brown. He won an NAACP image award. Those are facts, easy to understand information, which denotes low qualitative complexity. Let's look at the next page. Or as a writer, very good, yes. Now, when I look at this timeline of Chadwick Bozeman, I want to talk just a second about how this timeline set up. This is a vertical timeline. Maybe students haven't been exposed to this before. Additionally, um, this timeline is, it, it has weird boxes on the side by the way it's presented. And then when I look at this timeline, there's information in the timeline that was not in the text, uh, the main text of the article. So when I think about this, this proposes to me the mid-level complexity qualitatively. Because students are first having to read a different type of graphic that maybe they're not familiar with. Uh, definitely they've seen timelines by the time they get the ninth and 10th grade, right? But have they seen vertical timelines in this structure? Maybe, maybe not. We definitely have seen horizontal timelines. Um, then also with this presenting extra information, it is necessary for students to read the timeline in addition to the body of the article. So again, that presents mid-level qualitative complexity. So when we kind of put all those things together, all of those aspects together, when we think about the qualitative measure of this text, we're looking at low to mid complexity. The literal and explicitly stated facts, that gives us low complexity. But the use of that structure with the graphic, giving us more information, that demonstrates mid-level complexity. So now let's move on to our third aspect. And that is the reader and task. So our reader and task aspect of our rubric is divided into two sections, the reader section and the task section. The reader section really deals with the background knowledge of the reader and then what themes or ideas are developmentally appropriate for the readers. When we think about the readers of the Chadwick Bozeman article, the themes and ideas presented there 
are 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 appropriate for any ninth through twelfth grader, right? Um, now, students that maybe have a little more background knowledge, maybe they are from Anderson and have a more of a background knowledge of Black Panther or Chadwick Boseman. Maybe students who have seen the movie Black Panther, maybe students who are familiar um, with him, they might have more background knowledge to enter this text. But there are no um, concerns with the theme or ideas presented having any um, issues with the audience that this is appropriate for. Now, when we think about our tasks, our tasks are considered for a few different areas. First of all, comprehension. Is this something that's just a right there answer with our task? Are we just asking a question that they could easily look up the paragraph that it's in and find the answer? Or is this something where they're going to have to um, use a lot of cognitive complexity involving multiple cognitive steps in order to answer the question? So let's look at our two tasks. The first tasks task what is one word used to describe Chadwick Boseman okay and then task number two use text evidence to write an explanation of the author's purpose in writing the passage on Chadwick Boseman very different levels of complexity right <laughs> okay let's go to the next slide and let's analyze task number one so thinking about the task in regard to complexity, how would you describe it as a level, as low, mid, or high complexity? What is one word used to describe Chadwick Boseman? Low, mid, or high complexity? Drop it in the chat. Very good. It's a right there answer. We can go to the paragraph that has a description or a describing word of Chadwick Boseman and pick it out. That's a low complexity task. Very good. Easy, easy. Now, what if in this Chadwick Boseman article, there were no describing words about him? They told us about him, but nowhere did it say Chadwick Boseman was kind. Chadwick Boseman was a talented actor. What if it just told us facts about him, but never described him? And you had to describe him based on the way he acted or the things that he did. Would that increase the cognitive complexity? That would be mid. Yeah, yeah. They'd have to kind of. Yeah, very good. You'd be making an inference. I love that. Good job, Dory. <laughs> That's that overarching expectation, right? OK, now let's go to task number two. Oh, some of you may be getting heart palpitations because this looks like something that was on standardized tests, right? Anybody have any heart palpitations? You know what it looks like? Can't say it, can we? <laughs> All right. Use text evidence to write an explanation of the author's purpose in writing the passage on Chadwick Boseman. Ooh. What kind of complexity is this? <laughs> I think it's high for sure, y'all. That's pretty complicated. So first, read the entire passage. Comprehend the passage. Make a decision on what the author's purpose is. Find text evidence to support that author's purpose. There's a lot of cognitive complexity, a lot of tasks going on at one time. Students being given this task, that's a pretty challenging expectation. So, okay, I love your question, Sophia. Sophia, it could be a mid-level complex task with the audience being considered, right? Okay, so let's say, Sophia, that we're giving this task to students who have background knowledge of Chadwick Boseman. Maybe we're also giving this to 12th grade, right? They're a little more advanced. Their um, indicator expectations are way more advanced. Could this task then be mid-level complexity for that audience? Definitely, definitely. It's subjective, right? Okay, let's move on I, to our next slide. Well, quickly, the, the reason why I asked the question is even though the, the task um, 
may seem say they have multiple tasks, but seeing that they'll be using the text, there is evidence from the text to support their answers. So for me, I was thinking if they were asking them now when they're to read it um, in their own words or to write a summary, then I would say hi, but the information is still there. The complexity is just based on the amount that needed to be done, hence the question. I love that. I love that explanation. So yes, that if, if they are able to locate the evidence that proves their their answer, then could that then make the task a little less complex rather than them them having to come up with their own explanations or reasons or their own claims and evidence? Yeah, I like that. All right. So when we combine all of the aspects of text complexity, let's see where we land. For grades 11 and 12, if we gave them task one, find a describing word for a Chadwick Bozeman, that is very low complexity for that audience. If we were given task one to maybe ninth and 10th grade, it may be mid-level complexity because we have to remember that quantitative measure gave us um, a pretty rigorous expectation for ninth and 10th graders. Now, let's look at task number two for 11th and 12th grade. That may be mid complexity. But for 9th and 10th grade with task number two, that's a pretty highly complex uh, task and text for that audience. Now, after this discussion, you may be thinking, wow, this is really subjective and, and really difficult to determine. And, and how do you make these decisions? Well, I would like to offer you a next step in your text complexity um, discovery. And that is the text complexity resources support document. This document offers a couple of different places where you can kind of dig in and get a little more information about text complexity. Let's take a look at those. The first thing that we have for every grade band, we have several texts that we went through and did the text complexity analysis of. We analyze them quantitatively using that Lexile hub. And you'll see here on the left hand, this is the passage. This is teaching a child to ride, by, ride a bike. That's one of our release passages. And then underneath that, we have an annotated example of that text as we went through and noted it for the qualitative measure. So after we ran the quantitative measure, we recorded that information here on um, in our text complexity support document. Qualitatively, we went through and analyzed with the rubric. We noted on the actual passage and here in the um, in the table, just some different aspects that helped us see what the qualitative measure of the text was. Then we go through and we give you a reader and task analysis. Now, one disclaimer for the reader and task analysis is that we don't know your audience. You are the experts of the students in your building. So that reader aspect really is contingent on the students that you serve. But as far as low complexity tasks, maybe you were just at, you're just asking students to identify the main idea. That's low level complexity. But if you're asking students to revise this piece for a different audience or from a different perspective, that's pretty high complexity. And then we offer you the overall text complexity of this passage and task. Again, we have multiple examples at every grade band provided to you within this text complexity support document. That's so maybe you can take these and use them in your PLCs as you discuss. Um, text complexity with the audience that you support and serve. Additionally, in the text complexity resource document, we have some considerations for instruction. This is just a bulleted list of different places where uh, we saw need to highlight how we use text complexities to support our instruction. And then finally, we also have a section called frequently asked questions in regard to text complexity. Um, we've received several questions for the past few months as this document has been posted, and this document is going to be revised in June to um, support some more answers to some questions. But um, just, just a few answers to questions that we commonly get around text complexity. All right, so now 
at the end of our webinar today, that was a fast 45 minutes. Um, I think I talked to you like a speeding train going down the tracks. Um, I want you to do another little self-assessment. Again, we have our two, or two statements here. I can define text complexity and explain its three components. And I'm equipped to use all three components of text complexity to evaluate text for classroom use. Let me know how you're feeling now at the end of our 45 minutes. That's awesome. I'm not seeing twos and threes and ones. That's great. Great, great, great. Makes me excited. Thank you, friends. Oh, and I see lots of names that are repeat attenders. So it's great to see y'all again this morning. All right, hopefully you feel a little more developed in your understanding of text complexity. I know when I was first presented this information, it was pretty life changing for me. I'd never considered this before. I would always taught a level text system in my classroom and that's what I did and that's what level they were and we moved on from that, right? But having this knowledge equips you to move forward and appropriately use complex text with your students. So now we have a little Mentimeter. So what you're going to get um, in the chat, you'll get a link to your Mentimeter, or you can scan this little uh, QR code here. We do have to have these eight digits um, here to enter the Mentimeter, but what I need to know is what do you need next from me or from my team? How can we support your next steps with text complexity? I would like you to tell me if you're elementary, middle, or secondary, just so I can have an idea. Um, but drop into the Mentimeter. What do you need next? Okay, I see some answers coming through. All right, thank you all for dropping in your answers. I appreciate that. Again, that gives us a next step for uh, where we can move with text complexity and supporting our state. Look for that in the fall. Um, we'll go ahead and move on just for time's sake. For more support, you have linked on your landing page your text complexity resources folder. This is a place where you can find other text complexity resources. Um, if you ever want some help navigating that folder or navigating your next steps with text complexity, feel free to email me. We can hop on a virtual 30 minute, one hour meeting and talk about text complexity and how I can support you with that. But I'll say that's on your landing page. But when we think about our purpose, that 54% of students reading at or on at or above grade level, our purpose today was to look at text complexity and figure out how we can make sure that students in South Carolina are exposed to appropriately complex texts that are adequate for teaching the standards. And I feel like we've achieved that today. So with that being said, let's go ahead and fill out our feedback survey. Casey Prince Harvey is going to drop that in the chat. My name again is Mandy Hawker. The title of today's session was Text Complexity. I appreciate y'all sticking with me the entire hour today. Um, always love getting to see y'all on a Monday. It definitely uh, makes our week a lot happier. Uh, but go ahead and drop in the chat your feedback. And as you finish, you're welcome to hop off. I would like to say that um, my team will listen and linger for a little while today. If you have any other questions or thoughts um, or anything you just want to talk to us about, we are always happy to uh, listen and linger and get to know you all a little bit better. Thank you for being with us today.